If you've been watching the Gen 4 NVMe SSD market recently, then you'll have seen that things have been hotting up a bit with Samsung releasing their 980 Pro and WD releasing the SN850. Both of these pushing the top end speeds of 7,000 megabytes per second. Interestingly, neither of these two launched a Gen 4 SSD in the initial launch last year, so this is the first jump into the market. Today, we're taking a look at the latest entry from Seagate. Now, they did launch a first wave Gen 4 NVMe SSD called the FireCuda 520, which offered read speeds of up to 5,000 megabytes per second. This was on par with the competition at the time, but also offered a class-leading endurance racing of double the competition, making it a standout option. As always, though, the game moves on, and the two SSDs I mentioned at the beginning are now at the top of the table. So in comes the Seagate Firecuda 530. Seagate tells us that they've taken extra time to custom tune the controller to achieve the fastest speeds yet, with lots of effort spent making a huge improvement in real-world applications like file copies and sustained writes with huge gains over the Firecuda 520. They've also worked closely with EK Waterblocks on a new custom heatsink version that's compatible with the PS5 and should offer a significant cooling benefit in PCs where the motherboard doesn't offer a built-in solution. As well as the speed increases, another huge benefit of the Firecuda 530 is the endurance. At 1,275 terabytes written for the 1TB and 2,550 terabytes written for the 2TB, Seagate has once again been able to offer double the endurance rating of its main competition which is a real benefit for content creators who want to get the best return on investment. For the enthusiasts, it should technically maintain its high performance for a much longer period of time too, and it could be especially useful with PS5, as it's believed that will put a strain on SSDs because of the way it uses them with constant updates and ever-increasing installation sizes. Last up, there's that five-year warranty in an application suite including CTools and Disk Wizard to help you keep your SSD in top condition. And on top of that, you get three years of Seagate's excellent recovery services, which means they'll try and get your data back should there be a failure, with around a 90% success rate. It's a nice to know, especially for anyone with critical data. So that's all of the technical info, but naturally we're keen to see what this looks like in some real-world testing. So let's see if the Firecuda 530 can live up to its impressive spec sheets. For our testing today, we have a synthetic benchmark using Crystal Diskmark. Two real-world file transfer tests, one for video files to see an ideal sequential copy, and then a game file copy representing a more difficult copy. we then also done a torture test to see where the limits are. Now, we haven't done a boot-up test for this SSD, as we really are at the point where it's not a reliable test between competing drives, as there's such a huge margin of error between each boot-up when you're looking at boot-up speeds under 10 seconds. So first up is our Crystal Dismart testing. This will show the true speeds that our SSD can hit when being used. Effectively, it shows how fast program or game files can be accessed and written without bottlenecks. It's also relevant as we start to see GPUs starting to take advantage of direct access to SSDs, such as NVIDIA RTX's IO or AMD's SAM. We performed two tests, a 1GB and a 32GB pass, to see if there are any differences when the sizes are increased. Our Seagate Firecuda scored just over 6,800 megabytes per second read and 6,700 megabytes per second write on the sequential test in both the 1 gig and 32 gig tests. This puts it right between the recently tested WD Black SN850 and the Samsung 980 Pro for read speeds. The Seagate is way ahead of both in the write speeds. This is a great start for Seagate. And one possible reason for these high write speeds is that it uses 176 layer NAND versus most of the competition using 96 layer. Now onto our file copy test. And these are designed to be large enough to use up any available DRAM so that we can see the true write speeds of our SSD. And first up, we have our video file test. This is a 94 gigabyte file of MP4 videos that should represent a good sequential write test. The headline speeds on the box or spec sheets are sequential this is where we should see the highest potential speeds. The Firecuda 530 copies our whole 94GB file in just 36 seconds, maintaining an average of 2.5 to 2.7GB per second. This is a huge improvement on the first wave Gen 4 SSDs, which at best could maintain around 1.5 to 1.8GB per second. Next up, we tried our game file, in this case Cyberpunk 2077. 
which comes in at 58.8 gigabytes. Normally with game files we see much less consistency in the write speeds as the SSD handles different file types and sizes, resulting in a lower overall speed. And this is one area where Sega is obviously putting some extra work with the custom controller. The Fire Cuda 530 flies through the copy in just 24 seconds, but more impressively is that it maintains the same 2.5 to 2.7 gigabytes per second average. Lastly is our torture test. To perform this, we've started with a massive 563 gigabyte folder. We then copy and paste this to our SSD. As soon as it finishes, we delete the new files and then paste them in again, giving the SSD no time to cool down. We then keep repeating the test to see how long it takes before we see evidence of throttling. Now, it's unlikely that in the real world you'd see this happen unless you have a significant cooling issue, but it does give us an insight into how an SSD would react. For this test, we're copying from a Samsung 980 Pro to the Fire Cuda 530 to make sure that we can maintain the highest possible write speeds. We also have monitored the temperatures, although it's important to note that writing is more intensive than reading, so we aren't comparing these in this test. First up, we tested the Fire Cuda 530 with no heatsink or cooling solution. Our first sign of throttling comes at 1 minute 45 seconds, just as the Fire Cuda hits 71 degrees Celsius. Now at this point, it's written about 280 gigabytes of data. It dips down briefly and then returns to its average 2.6 gigabytes per second. We then see regular throttling after that, and at just after three minutes, we see an extreme drop off in performance when the Fire Cuda hits 74 degrees. In total, it takes seven minutes and 41 seconds to complete the 563 gigabyte transfer. Now, unfortunately, we couldn't get the heatsink version of the Fire Cuda 530 in time for this video. So to simulate the differences, we use the provided heatsink on our Asus motherboard to see just how much difference it would make in the same test. The starting temperature for this test was slightly lower at 33 degrees versus 37 for the no heatsink test. But as expected, what we see is that the temps go much slower with the heatsink attached. In fact, we managed to copy the whole 563 gigabyte folder with absolutely no throttling at all, and in just three minutes, 40 seconds, less than half the time. Straight away, we delete the folder and then repaste it back in. There's an initial speed dip right at the start this time, but this isn't throttling, and likely more to do with the fact that we've just deleted 563 gigabytes and there was some background clearing work to do on the SSD, which you wouldn't normally see. At 6 minutes and 30 seconds, we see our first reduction in performance dropping down to around 2 gigabytes per second. This then starts to tail off further as time goes on, and this is where it gets interesting. At this point, our Seagate Fire Cuda 530 is still only at 57 degrees, so it's way below its throttling point. After completing this test, we did some more testing to find out that the Samsung 980 Pro begins throttling once over 60 degrees versus the Seagate's 70 degrees. So the performance drop we're seeing is actually the Samsung. Both of these SSDs have the same motherboard heatsink on them, so the only difference is the throttling temperature. As the test goes on, we see speed increases and decreases happening in line with the Samsung 980 Pro going above and below the 60 degrees. Even with this limitation at the end, we still finish a 1.1 terabyte copy in just eight minutes, with the Seagate looking like it could manage another 563 gigabyte copy before it starts throttling. We don't know why this new gen Samsung is set to throttle at 60 degrees, but this could become relevant if you have no heatsink and a poor cooling solution in your PC case, as you definitely see a drop in performance much sooner than with the Seagate. And this leads us on to our summary. It looks like Seagate's Fire Cuda 530 really does offer some serious performance credentials. It has, within margin of error, the highest benchmark speeds in class, and at the same time offers double the endurance, meaning it'll not only last longer, but should also maintain its highest performance levels for much longer too. Add in the five-year warranty and Seagate's excellent data recovery service, and you have a well-rounded offer that should really appeal to enthusiast gamers and content creators. We'll be taking a look at the heatsink version of the Fire Cuda 530 in a later video to see how that stacks up to using the built-in motherboard ones. But whilst you're waiting for that one, we'd love to know what you thought of this video, so be sure to comment below. And if you're interested to see more videos like this one, then don't forget to hit that subscribe button. The Seagate Fire Cuda 530 is available now at scan.co.uk or via our link in the description.